Wesley and Pool. Christopher Bratt. You're back again with some of that Dawn of War 3 action. I know, can't get enough of this. Last time we did a video, I think we, it was still a pretty chunky bit of gameplay we had yep. to look at, even more this time around. Um, it was a hands-off thing that you'd you'd seen. Yep. Um, this time, this is actually you playing. I know, so that's why I'm playing very badly. I should get that out of the way. Oh, it's I'm playing right. it for the first time and trying to work out its systems, its units. There's a bit of me not knowing exactly what I'm doing in this, but, you know, I, I get along. You know when... Uh, Polygon played Doom, and wow. people lost their there. people lost you their mind. I'm not that bad. The, the RTS fans are going to go to town with well, this. Well, RTS fans. <laughs> this is actually a mission from the campaign. Yes. Do you know whereabouts? Yeah, this is a actual. This is coming up to the climax of Act Two, so it's a relatively late. Okay. Uh, uh, campaign mission. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the reasons why this was a mission that Relic Entertainment, the developer, chose uh, for us to have hands on with was because it involves a big map yep. and everything effectively for the Space Marines is unlocked. Okay. Yep. So We're you've got access to all of the units, the structures, uh, the and this soldiers. this big massive thing that's about to show up. Yeah, this and all the elite units of which... This is the Imperial Knight? The is Imperial called? Knight is one. Okay. Uh, the I biggest unit ever in a Dawn War game. I, so I, I think this is extremely cool because of course it is and it's a, it's a nice little moment. It shows off how this unit works really well. But, right, Gabriel was taking loads of damage beforehand. He was getting absolutely oh, smashed by, by those uh, Aldo you, units. I think, he, I oh, think you'll find why is he on full Why is he on full health at the beginning of that fight? Just, well, he just got such an adrenaline boost from seeing his mate rescue his life right, okay. that it revived his health. Okay, cool. So, um... <laughs> Yeah, the, the Imperial Knight, is is that the most powerful unit? Well, power is relative, right? So is it, what's interesting about Dawn of War 3 is it uses an elite unit system inspired by the way that the actual Warhammer 40k tabletop worked, where right. you'd spend a certain number of points on your units in your army, remember? Mm -hmm. So the more powerful the unit, the more points it would cost sure. to try and balance out the armies. Um, each elite unit carries a corresponding elite point cost. Right. Uh, Ga Gabriel Angelos, who is the uh, standard sort of melee-focused elite unit. There, and the that, protagonist of the story. Yeah, yeah, he's like the leader of the Blood Ravens, the chapter of Space Marines in the story. He is a relatively low um, elite points cost. Right. So you can bring him into the action quite quickly. Okay. Um, and if he dies, it doesn't cost that. He respawn relatively quickly, right? Yeah. Whereas uh, the Imperial Knight co costs more elite points, so it's more of a late game option. So if we look in the bottom left of the screen right now where you can see the resources, uh, I think the yeah. green triangle is elite points. Is that just going to tick yeah. upwards throughout the yeah, mission? Yeah, yeah, so it replenishes. Is there anything right? you can do to kind of give Not that Not that I've found. Okay. It's just it's a balancing technique, right? So it's, a, it's almost it, a timer, it, right? Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, exactly. Yeah, The idea is that you have to wait. So you can so you see the icons on the left hand side of the screen there. Mm -hmm. There's one for uh, Angelos. There's one for the Imperial Knight, and there's one for the Terminators, which are the third elite unit that we got to play with. Right. Um, are we going to see that locked, in this mission? You see the little locked symbol. I can't spawn them at the moment because I don't have enough elite points. Okay. So once I do, then uh, I'll be able to. The cost is seven for them, I think. Yeah. We're already uh, up to two here. I, yeah. So we're already up to two. So it's balancing the mission. Right? I should point out something uh, which I imagine viewers have just noticed uh, we were limited to showing 20 minutes of gameplay from from uh, your hands on yep. with Dawn of War 3 I think this mission took you about 50 minutes so yep. I'm, I, we'll see the, the kind of the entire narrative I guess but uh, I've, I've chosen to cut bits that yep. I thought were the most interesting yep, yep. what is that Chris that looks like base building it is what's all that about how's I that know, work yeah. in this video well medium? base building as Dawn of War 2 players will know wasn't really a big focus for that game sure. it was more about micromanaging really powerful units Dawn of War 1 was very traditional RTS it had base building loads of units on screen mm -hmm. uh, Dawn of War 3 is sort of like a fusion between the two I'd say so yep. the base building is back but base building works in a very sort of basic fashion, right? So you capture points. In, there's one of there I've captured on the top left. I've actually built a turret on top of that point there. Um, so I can defend against this assault on my base from the Eldar. Um, and uh, you harvest resources. So just like previous games, you know, you've got requisition, you've got power. And you use those to buy uh, or spawn or build other units like squads of Space Marines, vehicles, other buildings. And, uh, you know, all the, the sort of 
uh, units that you'd expect from um, the Space Marine chapter at least uh, are present and correct. So you can build, like you can build an army of tanks. Yeah, sure you can build an army of scout marines if you want. You, there's, there's, you can basically, the flexibility is there for you to do what you want with your population cap, which is 200. You can see the population cap on the bottom left again. I've got like I think 55 out of 200 there at that point. Um, so it's kind of like a return to the base building that people missed from Dawn of War 2, but it still retains a heavy emphasis on elite units. So it's still got that sense of micromanaging these massively powerful superstar units that sure. are on the battlefield at the same time, which is pretty cool. You, you happy with that balance? You think that's, yeah, that's where I am, the winning yeah, is? Yeah, I mean, let's be honest. D Dawn of War, it's not StarCraft, right? Mm -hmm. So there's that sort of really reactive, like really... Like Starcraft is really focused on having a certain yeah. army and moving it about and high like, CPM. Yeah, all that kind of stuff. Dawnwall is not like that. Dawnwall is more, I think, gameplay driven in the sense of you're sort of trying to, ha you have sort of encounters on the map and you're sort of managing your army in that in that sense. Um, so, so you're taking uh, capture points from the enemy here. That's how that works. So they're, they're spread around the map and you want to be holding as many of those capture points yeah. as you can to be bringing the resources. Exactly, yeah. So this mission is Which is kind of typical basic. for Relic. This yeah, is yeah. This is a very... So I asked them, about, you know, if this was representative of the kind of missions that we're going to see in the game and it is. Big map, lots of sort of avenues and directions for you to go in. There's places for you to explore. There's um, lots of objectives for you to achieve, That's essentially. Huge on the overkill left. there. Huge yeah, overkill. Well. Where's the end pool? It's on the wall, mate. <laughs> uh, so, uh, and, and this this mission is fairly basic in that there's there's essentially warp gates the Eldar are using to bring in lots of troops. You yep. need to destroy the warp gates and then kill all of the Eldar. Mm -hmm. And they have a base somewhere on the map. So, uh, the fact that you're taking capture points off the enemy, do you get the impression that in this mission the enemy force is worried about resources and, and is spending resources and playing a no, game? No, I, I think the, it's scripted, yeah. I don't think that's the case. It's not, you're not playing, uh, in this mission at least, you're not playing against an enemy that's stuck. It's not a level playing field. Yep. And they're sort of building up their base as well. This is a scripted mission. You know, there's a story here. You're... You, that, I, I love that moment because it's clearly <laughs> you like being, holy shit, that unit's so powerful. Yeah, that's like long long distance artillery, which is, which is really good. This is a sort of like, Dreadnought moment, mm -hmm. which is I always I like to have at the front of any sort of assaulting force because that makes they, sense. Yeah, they do a lot of damage, and then I've got my long range sort of units firing from a distance. Just drop a predator into the middle of the the battle just because you can. Yeah. So one of the I don't if you see on the bottom left of the screen above the window with um, my sort of special yeah. abilities in it, there's three icons there. One of the special Space Marine special abilities is uh, drop pod ability. Mm -hmm. So you can call in drop pods um, onto the battlefield, anywhere on the battlefield really, and they will typically do. They'll do different things. So there are different types that you can bring in, but one of and one of them will it will spit out a, a squad or something or a vehicle like I did there. Some of them become like their own little mini sort of turrets. Sure. But one of the, the best things is that they, when they drop on enemies. It's so scatters them, right? Them up, yeah, yeah, right? that's cool. Uh, which is really, really. I cool. can't actually quite tell. The, is the, are the drop pods? Uh, are you just waiting on a lengthy cooldown, or is it? Is there a cost involved as well? Um, that you have to build them. Oh, okay, right, right, right. So I'm um, so I'm building them back at base, right? Uh, which is which is why you're seeing. And I've used, and then there's a cooldown. So once you use them, then then there's a cooldown. So but I have to spend uh, resources to to make them. The, so that I have them. The other ability we've just seen uh, a couple of times now is the orbital strike that you yeah. use. That, that's this is the Space Marine's global ability yeah. triggered on the top left, and you can see the uh, countdown for its its use again. I felt like this was a little overpowered. Right. Um, now, we haven't seen the global abilities of the other two races that are included in the game, the Orcs and the Space so Marines. that's a 300 uh, second cooldown or something like yeah. that? It feels like quite... It doesn't feel like a long time to waste. I got to use it quite a lot in each mission. Right. This is one of the warp gates I'm destroying here, um, I, which is part of the objectives of the mission. Um, so, yeah, and and it is so powerful. And actually, the way it works is, I mean, it's really cool to use, and the actual animation for it is, it's got this really cool like anime effect 
where where enemies will slowly lift up yeah, as they're being in, yeah. as they're getting disintegrated. It's really cool, um, but it's so powerful. And actually, as you can move it around yep. the battlefield, and the more units it disintegrates, the bigger and more powerful it gets. Okay, so uh, whilst you typical RTS, like you're messing around in the base whilst the the, the big colossus gate that you're supposed yeah, to be destroying yeah. is being cutscene. Uh, yeah. Um, That's just telling me that I've achieved one of the objectives. Yep. Um, yeah, so... Uh, so the orbital strike, is. do you know if that's going to be in the multiplayer or not? Yeah, 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 yeah. But then, see, we're not... See, I'm bringing down the drop pods here. Um, and that one spits out turrets. Oh, cool. Yeah, so now they're starting to fire. And oh, and they're like housed in the fireplace. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so there's different types. I like that one a lot. So here I'm just capturing uh, an yeah, enemy, yeah, control a, a control point here. I will then be able to, um, once I've captured it, be able to bring send uh, Servitor to build a, um, a turret on it, or turret on it, yeah. which will increase the number of resources I can get from it, like as that resource point there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so just to reinforce the sense that you can have much bigger armies in this game. See all those uh, those icons at the bottom there. Yeah, they're, they're all my icons. units. Yeah. So that's yeah, I've got 194 out of 200 population cap at the moment. I, so I've, I've got a massive army essentially. I've sort of grown accustomed to it now, and I think it's helped that we started small and have, have built up. But when I first looked at the screen, it, it's quite busy. It's very There's a busy. lot of information to take in. Yeah, and this is the argument that Relic uses to explain the new art style. Yeah. One of the reasons they've, they've gone for a clearer, more crisp, uh, you could say less sort of grimdark oh, definitely, yeah. Uh, yeah. art style, mm -hmm. is they want it to make more visual sense. They want it to be easy to understand what's going on on the screen because there's so much going on all of the time. It, it completely mirrors the conversation that's going around with Civilization VI at the moment. Yeah, um, I suppose it does. Like yeah. slightly controversial, cartoony at times art mm -hmm. style mm -hmm. that is easier to read for the player in terms yeah. of, uh, of the game. All the lads, lads on the march. But, uh, um, but yeah, you, you there are and and people say, well, it's MOBAs, right? If you look at League of Legends and Dota Two, yeah, like well, World of Warcraft, extremely easy to read abilities. And yeah, they're very crisp and clean and, and responsive and clear and yes, cartoony. But everyone knows what's going on all of the time. Yeah. And crucially, this is a point that you often forget. Have, by having a visual art style like this, you're less demanding. Uh, mm -hmm. You would well, not less demanding, but you've got a better scalability for your PC game. Yeah, absolutely. Which means it can run better on lower end machines. And and at the moment, PC game developers are all about trying to make their game as accessible as possible for the widest number of it, machines. It's just like it makes sense business wise. Yeah, there's there's an argument to be made with League of Legends that part of its success is, is because that it runs exactly, on everything. It runs on yeah. all sorts of machines. Yeah, and the previous Dawn of War games, I mean they required relatively good PCs at launch for, for them to run and mm -hmm. look good. So they're they're taking a different approach. Yeah. They want this to be a really massive game that many many people play. I I, I get that. I I think I I am sympathetic to both sides of that argument. Yeah, um, I think it's an interesting debate. Yeah. Oh, um, so you've just got your third elite unit um, at some point. Anyway, I, yeah. they've just shown up there. So how does what do you say is an assault terminator? Yeah. Something? So they're they're just um, really great. Really, really. So t you know the terminator units in the Dawn in the Warhammer 40k universe. I like Space Marines, but like really incredible yep. Space Marines. Um, so they're just incredibly tough squad of Space Marines um, that you can that you can use. So with the other two are named characters and seem to have yeah, a big they're not, they're, they're, role they're, in the that's story. That's not a named character. Okay. Now that, this brings me back to my earlier point about what they're doing, which is interesting with the elite units, and that is that there's you know how hero picking is such a popular thing right now in games. Yep. Everything from like Overwatch. To like team, obviously Team Fortress did it in shooters beforehand, but Overwatch is really popular in Overwatch now. And you got you got Team Hero picking in MOBAs, right? So yep. Dota and League of Legends. So they're going for a bit of a hero picking thing with Dawn of War three. Before each mission, before each game of Dawn of War, you pick three heroes. Three so have units. you seen any of the other? Uh, I've seen one more a librarian. Oh, okay, right, yeah, cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I've asked Relic about this, and they say there's going to be loads. Right. So, That'll Dawn of War 2, there was like six or seven or something uh, for the Space Marines. Um, so, is that but some, it's going to be loads. Is that loads mostly and, a multiplayer thing? Because this mission, yeah, like it will obviously be. Gabriel and I forgot the name of the Imperial Knight, yeah, uh, Solaria. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah if, you, if people didn't know that, she's the state actress from. <laughs> um, 
like those two are obviously leading the storyline in this mission. I guess you have to take them along. Yeah, but this is a scripted story mission. So longer term, you know, once everyone's done with the campaign, mm-hmm. it will be a case of hero picking from a selection of of hero units that and that will be for the case just for not just for the space marines but for the orcs and the sure. eldar and any race that they add in with dlc expansions. i think that works and as we were talking about with the way in which the elite points system kind of functions the um it, it sort of mirrors the tabletop game yeah Again, that's like, the, like you you pick hero characters when you're building up your r- roster exactly, and like yeah. that's it that's an interesting decision to get to make yeah and and relic makes the point that the strategy of it is similar to that of the tabletop and that it was inspired by the way the tabletop works in that you know you've got a certain number of points to spend and you need to spend them wisely as i said like uh, Ga- gabriel angelos is a good early game hero unit mm-hmm. who is fast uh melee brawler um but you wouldn't want you wouldn't want all three unit uh, hero units that were similar. You want to balance it yeah, out, right? Yeah, So you might need you might need a tank like um, the Imperial Knight for a late game. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the the librarian, uh, which you know is going to be a complex sort of psycho style mm-hmm. um, hero unit. And you know who who knows what else there's going to be. So I think it'll be a lot of fun to unlock them all. Uh, and you know, mess about with different combinations and sure. And I, yeah, I, it's interesting to have to think about them in terms of when in the game you want to use them. Sort of reminds me a little bit of building a Hearthstone deck and like you know when you're picking the the higher point cards. Yeah, you can't just go in with the high point cards. Yeah, yeah, you need yeah. a balance that works exactly. Right yeah, you can't have all legendaries. Yeah, well, you can try. But um, so so this is the the final push, by the way. I think. Yeah, once you've completed all the objectives, you've killed, destroyed all of the warp gates. Yeah, we're just going to. Then you unlock the final encounter at the top of the map, mm-hmm. um, which is where I'm sort of sending all of my yeah. troops up to. Have you I got, think at this oh, point you've almost got, got all, a cap, haven't you? It's yeah. like 194 out of 200. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Um, yeah, no, it is. Uh, and it, it's. I think my army is a little overkill for the mission. Yeah, but that, that's the great thing about single-player campaigns. In you can feel really, RTS, yeah. really powerful. And I've basically got all my drop pods available. Um, yeah, you've got the, the Storm, Orbital Strike. Yeah, yeah there's, everything's there. Trick, curing everything up. Um, <laughs> and I've got... Yeah, so I'm marching up to the top of the hill to kill the big yeah. bad boss. This is my... Um, one of my favourite things about RTS games is when, when you go from a, a single-player campaign where you've been thinking like this the whole way through, you're like, right, I won't attack them just yet until I've got a massive army yeah. that's kicked out completely. <laughs> yeah. And then you go into the multiplayer and you try and do that and it, and it like, never falls works. apart completely. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Um, so yeah, I've got my Assault Terminators, uh, Imperial Knight Solaria, uh, uh, Angelos, Orbital Strike, everything oh, is... Oh, man. Everything God. is primed. It's a, for it's a hell of a damage. force, isn't it? Like when, when you have everything together. Yeah, and this is one of the things that I think was missing from Dawn of War Two in a sense, which was, I think, a really great game and people really enjoyed it. Are you actually bring? You're not bringing that one unit along. I think it was bugged. Oh, okay, I think right. I tried. Wow, would this you, is would one you of have waited? Why I was annoyed. Would you have waited? I was, would have waited. Yeah. <laughs> I leave, everyone needs a bit of the action. Um, yeah. So. Uh, this this kind of feeling is something that Dawn of War Two sort of lacked a little bit. Mm-hmm. The idea that you've got this ridiculously massive army uh, going up a, oh, another this is ridiculously cool. massive army. Is that the equivalent of the Eldar? Yeah, Imperial that's Knight, the, like yeah, a, a giant yeah, unit. That, that's basically yeah. This is the counter. So this is where the orbital strike comes in. Nice. Uh, I'm oh dropping God. pods everywhere. Oh God, that's brutal. And look, look, see, it actually raises the um, the massive enemy units as well. Oh wow! So, you, so which is which is good. It's like a stun effect, basically, yeah, yeah, levitation yeah. stun effect. Um, getting more and more powerful. You see more and more units getting caught up in it. Uh, as everyone moves in, all the tanks. G- Gabriel the got, was a little over enthusiastic, wasn't he? There? Yeah. Gabriel was a bit of a glass jaw. Yeah, he he does a lot of damage and he's really mobile, but he's uh, doesn't last very long. He so, died a lot for me. That's the problem with, with melee characters, I guess. Sometimes. Mm. All right, here we so, are. Yeah. This is this the final. Yeah. So, Story wise, what exactly is going on here? Do you do you have any idea outside of the mission? Yeah, but I don't think Dawn of War story is anything to get too excited about. Right. Basically, everyone's after this mythical. Artifact and you want to get it first. And you need to get it first. Excellent. All right, cool. Well, that was 20 minutes of Dawn of War 3. Hopefully Victory. You enjoyed it. Yes, well done. Thank yeah, you. it was a very impressive battle at the Thanks. end Great. with all 194 of your soldiers. <laughs> um, yeah, is anything else going up 
today feature there'll be yep. a feature on the site you you're um, kind of doing something like on... a hands on thing uh and uh there'll be more from the trip that I did to relic in the coming weeks as well cool do you like them are they a good studio relic yeah they're a great studio yeah excellent i think they do really great rts games cool all right we'll see you next time thanks very much cheers bye